Welcome to Altium Designer PCB Rules. In this module, we will learn how to generate rules for the PCB, including using the PCB filter panel and find similar object methods for rule creation. While I mentioned it in an earlier module, rules are what drive the PCB layout. The phrase rules rule is most certainly true within Altium. Selecting rules from the design pull-down menu opens up the PCB rules and constraints editor window. Rules are separate from the design and PCB objects and are stored as part of the PCB document. This allows for better portability of the PCB file as it carries with it its associated rules. There are two types of rules, unary and binary. Unary rules define a standalone attribute like trace width, whereas binary rules cover interaction between two objects like clearance between tracks or between components. We can see that rules are organized into 10 subcategories. On the right side of the window, all the rules are listed with two important details showing priority and enabled. We will talk about priority a little later. The enable checkbox allows for a rule to exist but not be enforced. This is an important consideration. Normally I do not disable a rule as I would not want to inadvertently release a PCB with disabled rules. Diving down into the electrical category, we see again the two details of priority and enabled. Clicking on the plus sign opens up the electrical rules category showing us the associated rules. As expected, clearance, short circuit, and unrouted nets are listed along with modified polygons. Looking at the clearance rule might help clear up a few things. This rule is the default rule in place when a PCB is created. Most important, the scope of this rule is set to all for both first and second objects. Rules are targeted or scoped using these object matching queries. To select a particular object like a 12 volt net or a group of objects like all. Please fight the temptation to edit the default rule for some particular need like a high voltage net requiring a larger clearance. If the default rule is edited like this, then all the other nets will not have any clearance requirements. This trap has caused more than a few PCB coasters to be created. I say coasters because all they were good for was placing under a hot coffee cup. It's better and safer to add another rule when you need a particular rule generated by right-clicking on the rule and then either selecting New Rule or Duplicate. Select Duplicate if you want to modify an existing rule. Select New to add another rule in this category. We'll select New. Now with the new entry, we can safely edit it and not affect the default rule. Let's add the clearance for the 12-volt net here. First, rename the rule. It makes it easier to find and provides insight for others. Click on the name and change to 12-volt clearance. It makes this rule's purpose obvious. We could further narrow the focus of this rule by changing the second object matching field using the pull-down menu. Here we see there are a few options, net, net class, layer, net and layer, and custom query. Let's keep it all for now, as that makes sense in this rule setting. We want the 12 volt net to have clearance from all of the other nets. Click on apply to see this rule set in place. At this point with two clearance rules, we should turn our attention to the priority settings. With only one rule, priority is not an issue, but with multiple rules in the subgroup, Priority matters. We need to ensure that the order of the rules makes sense. Clicking on the Priorities button, we can review and change the clearance rule priority by selecting the rule and either increasing or decreasing its priority. It is very important here to note that if the default rule with the scope of all is the number one or highest priority rule, this would have significant implications. With the scope set to all and all, this rule would apply to all objects for clearance. The effect would be to ignore all of the lower priority rules, and in particular the 12 volt clearance rule. I use a fishing net to describe the effect of priority. Whatever the scope of the highest priority rule includes or catches does not get passed down to the lower priority rules. In this case, all all, nothing would be passed to the 12 volt rule check, and only the default rule would be enforced. Changing the priority makes the 12-volt net object get caught first. 
and the rule for 12 volt clearances is actually applied to all of the 12 volt nets and their interaction with the other objects. All the remaining objects, in this case all the other nets not 12 volts, are checked by the default rule. Looking at the object matching options, we saw net classes. Altium uses classes as a convenient way to group objects together for the design rule creation. There are a number of classes in Altium, including net classes, component classes, differential pairs, PCB layers, as well as those associated with buses and others. Net classes can be created using schematic directives, as we saw earlier for the differential pair directives, that they would actually generate a differential pair class by default. Let's open up the power supply schematic. The creation of net class directives is an often used feature in Altium to provide for groups of nets to be created from the schematics and used for rule creation in the PCB. A typical example would be for a power net class that includes all the nets used for power. Let's add a new class called Power Nets in the schematics using the Net Class Directive. To do this, click on Place, Directive, Net Class, and then hit Tab to name this new net class prior to placing the directives on the schematic. Let's use the name Power Nets for this net class. If we wanted to add the rule here, we could at this point, but for the purpose of illustrating adding the rule and using the net class from the PCB perspective, we will add that from the PCB rules window later. Update the PCB from the schematics using the design update PCB. Notice that there's a new class definition being added to the PCB. Back in the PCB view, open up the rules and navigate to the routing category and expand it there to open up the width rule. Right click and add a new rule and name it power nets. Now using the object matching pull down menu, select net class and then our new power net class. We could then edit the width parameters as desired. Hitting apply or OK sets this new rule up. Again, be sure to check for the priority and don't use the default rule, but add a new rule. Now that we have looked at rules and added rules based on a net class from the schematic as well as manually from within the PCB, don't forget that rules can be added to the directives themselves from within the schematic as we saw in module 13, transfer to PCB. Placing directives in the schematic with rules defined can be one way to improve the communication between the schematic designer and the PCB designer. Using directives to create net classes in the schematic without adding the rule definition allows for the PCB designer to properly engineer the needed rule parameter based on the PCB physical attributes, like trace width based on current requirements. Having the net class defined, the PCB designer could include instructions for that net class to the PCB designer for rule generation, like Power Net Class will have to carry 5 to 10 amps. To add or check for net classes within the PCB, right click on the window and select Design Classes, and this opens up the Object Class Explorer. Here we can see all the classes clearly defined. We can create new ones as well. To see the defined class objects, left click on the class. To create a new net class, right click on the class net entry, add class, and then rename it. With this new class added, we can pick which nets are in the new class. Note if you click on the double greater than or double less than sign icons, all the nets move in the indicated direction. Clicking on just greater or less than icon moves only the selected net or nets. Now we have created a new net class for the PCB. Note further updates from the schematic may want to delete these new classes as they don't exist in the schematic. So be careful with future updates and disable the class deletions before executing the ECO, like this. How do you create custom queries for use when targeting rules for specific objects? One way is to use the find similar object method to create the query. Selecting a component and right-clicking selecting find similar object we can use this window to create an expression for use in a rule. Selecting same for the put print, make sure the create expression box is checked. Now hit apply and see if all of the target components are selected. That's good. Now shift our attention to the PCB filter window that had opened. Here we see the query expression in the filter window. You can either copy and paste from this into the rule or click on create rule button to open up the rule selection window. Let's select component clearance. For the Anderson connectors, we want to be able to place them together without generating errors. 
Clicking OK opens up the rules width in this new rule. Let's rename the rule to Anderson. Now we have a new rule with the first object matching query for the black Anderson connector. We would want the second query to match the red Anderson connector. So we can use copy paste of the first expression and click on custom for the second. We would need to edit this to point to the red connector like so. So now we have a rule for clearance between the red and black connectors. So letting the horizontal clearance to minus 5 mil allows them to be buttered together. Now with the rule defined, it's important to see if this rule scope is properly targeting all of the intended objects and no others. To test this, we will use the test queries feature. This opens up a test queries result window showing each expression's results. Clicking on the various entries jumps and zooms to those objects selected. Hit OK, and now let's place a red and black connector abutting. Watch to see if there's a clearance error generated. Nope, that's good. Note that there's still an error from the short circuit caused by the two vias, as you can see here. If we wanted to create another special rule for that, we could. One more method to generate rules is to use the Altium Rule Wizard. This is found in the Design pull-down menu. This opens up the wizard menu. Let's click Next. Here we can name the rule and add comments if needed, and then select the rule subcategory to add. Let's select Width Constraint. And let's add a width rule to a couple of nets, starting with the 5 volt net. Selecting the 5 volt net now, we want to add another by clicking on the Add Another condition. Note that there are a lot of options here, including layer and net classes that could be used in the creation of a more complex rule. With the 12 volt net added, we see that the wizard defaults to the logical AND of the two queries. Obviously, this would select nothing because you can't be both 12 and 5 volts. We would want to change this to read OR, like so. Now we would apply this rule to both the 5 volt and the 12 volt nets. While we're here, we can build up levels to this rule by selecting the group and clicking on the right arrow to enclose them in parentheses. We could now add more operators and conditions to further refine and tune the, the rule query. Hitting Next, we have the chance to review the relevant rule priorities. Assuming we like the priority settings, hit Next, and we can see the final rule as created. If we want to change the default values for this new rule, Check the Launch Main Design Rules dialog box to open up the rule editor when we click on Finish. In the PCB Rules and Constraints editor window, we can edit the rule values as well as use the test queries to validate the new rule.